Hey, welcome everyone. It's Jose here with Captain Hook Tree Climbing. I'm here in my favorite spot and I'm about to start the SRT series and I'm going to start right off with line setting. So line setting is going to consist of a few things, but we're going to go over three different methods that I like to set my line. The first method is going to be with a throw ball. The second method is going to be with a big shot and the third method is gonna be a hasty throw with a heaving line knot. All right guys, so first things first, safety. You're gonna to wanna to put a helmet on because whenever you're throwing up a 12 ounce weighted bag, you know, about 50, 60 feet, uh, it's gonna come down with uh, quite some force, some force that can hurt somebody. You just wanna to try to prevent that. And the first measure is gonna be with this. The second measure is gonna be just uh, just take a good survey of the area around you. Are there other people around you? Are you at work and the customer standing right next to you? And that's cool, that's fine. But um, you wanna, you're probably gonna wanna kick them out of that area. You know what I mean? You're gonna have to ask them to, to just leave kindly, of course, you know, with, with, with courtesy. Um, but if you're not in that setting and you're just with your friends you just gotta like kick them in the butt and get out of here go put a helmet on or something like that uh, but seriously helmets are, are very important and um if no one else wants a helmet you better believe i'm wearing my helmet i don't care if it's 95 degrees out here right, this thing is on uh earmuffs are on if the chainsaw is running and if the chainsaw is running well, I cover my face too. Um, anyway, so that, that's the first thing you, you're gonna wanna do. And the next thing you kinda just wanna see where your trajectory is gonna be. So are you gonna be shooting towards the house or can you shoot away from the house? And this is where um, throwing the ball manually versus using the big shot is gonna make, uh, you know, is gonna be that decision maker, that game changer. Um, because if you have uh, a house like right there it's better to just get like right under the tree and shoot with the big shot because you could shoot almost vertically with that thing and you know you could get your shot and there isn't too much um, arc in in the trajectory you know what I mean so that's gonna prevent you from hurting anybody hurting any houses breaking windows breaking uh, car windows, denting cars, uh, putting holes in old sheds, I don't know, you name it. It's gonna, if it's there, the tendency for something to go bad is, it's pretty high. So just try to mitigate as much of that as you can and control what you can. And you know, if you can't control it, then you know, it's out of control, right? Um, but if you can control it, you know, give that uh, its, its attention, give it some attention. So let's move on to the throw bag and the throw line. Here I have my throw cube. Uh, it looks like a triangle right now. I know it's not much of a of a 3D shape here, but it, it opens up real nice and it's the best way to hold your throw line, uh, your throw bags, anything of that nature. Th this is gonna be the best type of uh, storage for it. Uh, I know that they have bags, sort of like a rope bag and they're a bit smaller but they seem cumbersome they they don't really have a big opening in the top and uh if you're going to be flaking your, your throw line into that it's gonna it just looks like a problem so i bought the throw line cube and this thing just stores exactly like this and you open it up just like this there it is so in here i have my throw line and a 12 ounce bag all right guys so before we even start talking about uh throw bags and anything like that you want to think about um the type of line you're going to choose so this line right here that i chose is um the notch uh accu line and it's the one point i think 1.8 millimeter it's a uh, hollow braid dyneema it has this uh, this really nice coating on it. I think it's some type of a wax coating, uh, but it gives it this um, this 
like sort of slipperiness and just like a really it's got a nice hand it, it's not really like stiff but it's not floppy it's not flimsy it's uh it's pretty nice i, I like this uh, dyneema line and you know so i would recommend something like this it's also very abrasion resistant and it's gonna last you a very long time i bought this line probably about a year year and a half ago and it has barely even frayed it, it doesn't really fray that much so now there's a reason why i chose the 12 ounce bag the 12 ounce bag i chose it because um uh before this bag i was using an 8 ounce and a 16 ounce so the 8 ounce is like on the lightest part of the range that's as light as you want to go um and really it's kind of you use that bag to go very high i mean if you're shooting 100 foot plus into the tree canopies um you probably should be using an 8 ounce even then it's kind of iffy and i'll tell you why because it doesn't give you uh, that enough weight to overcome the friction of all the of all the places that at which this this throw line is rubbing on you know what i mean so if it's rubbing on one two three four five six seven eight nine ten i mean when you're shooting a hundred foot in the air you're probably gonna have a lot more friction points on this throw line than you would at say 50 foot shot you know in a 50 foot tree so you know that that ball is going to come down very slowly and it might just get stuck all together it might not even come down so then there's the 16 ounce and the 16 ounce for throwing it's uh for me i found that it was kind of like a um sometimes it will throw sometimes it won't throw sometimes i like it sometimes i don't like it. it's too heavy sometimes um and so i was just like geez you know what do i do so I figured out that maybe what I have to do is, you know, cut it right down the middle. So what's in the middle between eight and 16? It's 12, 12 ounces. So 12 ounces gives you, in my opinion, the best of both worlds. It gives you enough lightness to, uh, you know, just make it easier to get up into the tree, throwing it most, uh, most notably, but also it provides you enough weight to get the, um, the throw line through all the, the friction points and, you know, overcoming the friction altogether. Uh, so I went with the 12 ounce and Notch sells this one right here and it's real like streamlined and I like it. Notch has been coming out with some great things lately and, and I really, uh, I commend them for all their efforts. Uh, very, very great job. Um, the Rope Runner Pro especially. Also, if you guys haven't seen my unboxing video, uh, it was like an in-depth uh, review on it. Uh, I'm gonna post it right up here to the left of the screen and you guys can check that out. Um, anyway, yeah, th this is probably the bag you wanna go with. So after you finished uh, selecting your throw bag, you're gonna want to uh, just think about like what kind of knot you're gonna use to attach it and you can use a variety of different knots uh the one knot that i like is the anchor knot and it's very easy to tie um, and it's quick to untie as well so you get two loops like that on there you go behind and bam so there we go yeah, sorry, I don't have any rabbit stories to tell about, um, you know, tying these knots, but they are helpful. Um, I wish I did know one. But anyway, guys, that that anchor knot right there, that's going to cinch down and that's going to hold up the whole time. That, that won't come out. Another knot you can use that's even quicker than this one is you take a bite through the ring there and you bring it around and over the throw bag and there's your girth hitch so the girth hitch will slide um, you want to put a just a little stopper knot right there at the end and this will eventually become this way so 
it's gonna come down to that stop or not. The technique is, well, some people like to do it to have that single line or that single handed method. And some people will get about a three foot length, somewhere in that range, up to the hip probably. And so then they, there's this pendulum and this creates some nice momentum on your line on your with with your line and your throw bag and there it is So that right there is the pendulum method. Uh, the pendulum method is, well, it's, without it, you can't even throw this, this ball up into the tree. You need to learn how to do that. If you don't know how to do that, uh, practice and keep practicing until you can just get that nice motion. So you're kind of making a C, you're drawing a C in the air every time you're, you make that pendulum motion. And the pendulum motion is, it's crucial to throwing the ball up there. That it's, all, it's all in the technique. And if you can get that technique down, um, that's gonna be, you know, that's gonna be half of it right there. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is uh, you wanna start just throwing the ball. So after, after you got your, your your method in and also if you don't want to use the single hand method you can use the double handed method and it's very ironic how there's a double double rope technique and a single rope technique in tree climbing and for throw line for throw bag throwing uh, or line setting there's a, a single hand and a double hand method so yeah um you know you get your nice about hip length and what i do is i put a bite right through the ring of this throw line here so you put a bite through there and there you go you get the rope that you need and then I feel like I can really like just I can throw this thing really good this way so same thing all right so I didn't get anywhere with that with that throw but the purpose of that was just to demonstrate to you guys um, just get out there and start throwing the, the ball like stop looking at it and stop you know wondering how am i gonna get better at this you know watching this video i hope it helps you but you definitely want to get out there and just um start throwing the ball start giving it a shot and getting accustomed to your trajectory everyone's gonna have their own um way of throwing the the ball might veer to the right a little bit for you. You might throw down a little bit. And, you know, once you start throwing it, you're gonna start gathering all these data points. And after you've collected all that data, you wanna start, you know, just manipulating it and changing it and be like, okay, well, maybe I gotta do this, maybe I do that. Do subtle changes and, and off you go. Before you know it, you'll be throwing this ball exactly where you want it. Um, and it, it just takes practice it's a matter of practice and that's how you build your accuracy so the way you build your accuracy is by first um, pendulum motion second you're gonna have to learn where you're throwing you know you're gonna have to get your baseline for yourself and then after that you can start getting uh, becoming more and more accurate so it's all up to you 
it's up to how much time you put into it and you know what you put in is what you get out so it's up to you guys anyway uh this time i'm gonna try to get it in in the in the tree and we're gonna set a line here so here we go Oh yeah. I just launched this bag so high up there. <laughs> All right, so another way of attaching your line, your climbing line to your throw line is uh, with some sort of carabiner, a small one. Uh, this is a non-locking DMM carabiner. Uh, you can also use one of the accessory carabiners. Uh, DMM also has those. Um, people I've seen some people use some pretty big carabiners and that's fine I guess um, you know whatever works for you but uh, if you're gonna be using a carabiner to get your line up there probably should try using a small one and this one's broken so we'll see if that works all right guys so the first method I'm gonna show you is just tying a base anchor so I've got my line here and this end here is basically just touching the ground what I want to do from there is just give it a few more pulls that way I can get it uh, you know I have enough room for a redirect or uh, maybe I'm just going out on a limb walk and uh, you know if I'm working I don't want to have my rope all the way up here because if if I cut a branch and the branch comes down and hits the rope it's gonna it's gonna try to wrap around the branch like this and it's gonna pull on you so if you're up there not lanyard in and uh, you know you're going out on another limb walk whatever it is um, you know if you're not lanyard in and that happens, it's going to pull you. You're probably going to go for a swing and you might get hurt. So you don't want to have the end of your rope up in the air ever. Uh, you want to have it on the ground. So it's up to you. It depends on what you're going to be doing. Uh, so it's very subjective in that sense. Uh, you're going to want to just, uh, you know, according to what you're going to be doing, have enough rope. And I like to have maybe like 10 foot of rope on the ground, even if I'm not going to be doing anything, just 10 foot, just in case. All right, guys. So I like using this ART anchor. Um, you can use a piece of rope that you have laying around. Um, you can use, um, you can use loop runners. You can use a lot of different things to make a base anchor. Um, but I like the, the snake right here. The snake is awesome. I just love it. The tool is just, I'm just in love with it. I'm, I'm crazy about it. Now there are a few ways to do basal anchors and I have some videos. I'll post them up here, up on the left. I, I know, um, I don't know. I, I have a few videos showing you how, how to do basal anchors. You, you can check those out. In this case, we're just gonna go with a butterfly real quick. And then tether that to the base anchor and there we go there it is now whenever I set a rope um, what I like to do is I like to just hold up top as high as I can get a foot lock in and then hang on it give it a bounce or two and this this is gonna hold up so th this anchor is good, um, base anchor is good. The anchor point up top is gonna hold. So we're, we're good, we're good to go, we're good to climb here. Uh, if I wanted to just go for a climb now, uh, I'm ready, all I need is a saddle and of course my rope runner. 
that rope runner pro if you guys haven't seen that video check it out it's gonna be up here next we're gonna go over tying a canopy anchor so let, let's get this rope out of the tree real quick and we'll set it up again to do the canopy anchor so when you're tying a canopy anchor the thing that you're gonna change is basically you're not gonna send it up with the throwback so earlier on the splice end since we do have a splice die I just kept the throw ball attached and then attached the throw ball directly to the the splice end with a small carabiner with the accessory carabiner uh, whenever you're gonna be doing a canopy anchor uh, you don't want to do that because you're gonna have to put this end through your quick link um, and you want to use a quick link um, and it's very important it's very important that you do use a, a quick link I'm sure carabiners will hold up but they don't have that side loading capability that the quick link provides you um, that's why the quick link is going to be the safest option and you're just going to have that extra security um, also whenever you're tying your canopy anchor you're going to have to dictate from the ground about how much um, how much slack you're going to have in the line so you remember that that extra rope that i that i spoke about uh for going out on limb walks or doing uh redirects anything like that you want to leave you want to make that decision from the ground you're not going to have the ability to just pull down rope until you see that it's about how much you want uh, that's the one of the um, pros about the base anchor so you want to keep those things in mind and just uh, adjust accordingly so here we go I have about 10 foot through the anchor point up there right now and those 10 feet are going to translate to 10 feet on the ground so I'll take the alpine butterfly just like that and I'll grab my my quick link and I'll attach it here just like that one of the things you want to get good at is having the this flat portion of the quick link on the bark so that it's not you know you don't have the bark pushing up against the quick link there you, you can you know I don't know if it fails it can break you know all those kind of things so you kind of want to just figure out the way that it's gonna stay against the bark and for me it looks like doing it this way is gonna do what I want so quick links on and now it's just a matter of fishing the splice end through the quick link And there it is um, you see you know it, it looks good this is what you want it to look like when it comes down so one of the biggest mistakes I ever did while um, you know storing my throw line is just taking this line like this and dropping it dropping it into the bag uh, that was one of the biggest mistakes I think I only did that one time um, because after that I had to unravel this huge bird's nest it was terrible it was really bad so oh you always attach it to something there's a little ring inside the bag attach it to that or you can just reattach it here and then the bag has pouches inside of it so i usually just throw it in the pouch so we're just gonna continue sending this up to the to the anchor point until we're locked in and as you can see there here's all my rope this is how much rope i have um so for this climb that i'm going to be doing now it's it's not that crucial that i have too much slack at the end because i'm not doing any redirects and i'm not planning on going on any uh, limb walks so this is okay this is fine uh, there's no no issue with this thing but like I said earlier, I always have an extra bit on the ground. And as always, you check the anchor point 
And that's good. That anchor point's gonna hold. That's how you set your line with the throw bag. And uh, we're just gonna go over the big shot launcher. It's basically an oversized launching machine. It's awesome. It's basically gonna allow you to launch your ball up to um, greater heights uh, with minimal knowledge, with minimal skills. Uh, you don't really need much skill to launch this thing. This thing is very simple, uh, very easy to master. All right, so with that being said, I'm just gonna show you the parts to it. Uh, so you got this very stiff rubber up here. So this is gonna allow you to launch it very far. So if you can get this thing down to the floor, you probably shoot this thing up over 100 feet, 100 feet, seriously. Uh, this thing is the bee's knees when it comes to height. Um, one thing that will allow you to control how high it shoots is by buying yourself a trigger for it. And you basically just hook this thing up here. Uh, so you kind of got to wrestle it on there. Um, anyway with this trigger uh you're gonna basically if you set it here and then you launch it you're gonna see where it goes you're gonna see how high it goes and it'll give you that very consistently that height it'll it'll be the same height over and over again because you're just pulling it down to here and you're, you're shooting it with the trigger so that's gonna help out so much it's gonna take out even more of the guesswork it's gonna make this thing easier to use this right here is like the ultimate setup if you want to get up into your tree uh lightning fast um just use the launcher um and then i guess practice on your on your throw ball another time but um anyway that's how you're gonna have to set it up and i'll show you i'll demonstrate that real quick with the throw ball here is the 12 ounce and so you're gonna have to release the safety here and then pull on the trigger so here we go let's see if we can get that to happen and then you aim and you're good wow I launched that thing way out there. So all I wanted to do was go around the stem of this tree right here in front of me, but I got it into the canopy of that tree over there. Yeah, it's way out there. Yeah, so yeah. Just to show you how how far it'll show it'll throw on that setting right there. That that, that shoots really far. And if you don't want it to shoot um uh, further than that, um you can simply change that by putting a, uh, a 16 ounce ball on there that's how you shoot the big shot and it's very simple guys I mean there's nothing else to say about it um, other than the fact that it'll shoot extremely far so you have to be very careful with that and just be cognizant of, of uh, anything in its trajectory I'm going to show you guys the the hasty method real quick and then we will be done with the first part of the SRT climbing series. The hasty method for me is basically you take a few coils, coils of rope and you kind of wrap it up as if you were to put away a rope. And so you have this weighted end on your rope right with a few coils and then okay so I just want to show you guys that knot real quick so what I like to do is after I take the wraps around the coils themselves take a bite put it through and you kind of girth it in a way you see that so gotta keep it on there nice and tight and so then you get enough line, enough to throw it, reach wherever you want to get it to, and you throw. 
and obviously you flick the rope a few times. And now you're ready to rock and roll. Um, let's say that that was just the first limb coming off of a bigger tree and you want it to just hip thrust. Um, from there, I mean, I guess if you're hip thrusting, if I was gonna be hip thrusting, I would just throw a, a zigzag on this side of the line, right? And then just terminate to the zigzag with the splice down here and that's it. And then I'll just, you know, just thrust up there. Another instance in which this type of technique could be very useful is for when you do get up there to that first, to that initial tying point, um, you're gonna move it up. So you, you do the same thing. Um, you can do that. You can use a removable redirect. It all depends on, on your preference and what you feel like doing that day. But just knowing all these techniques is gonna help you a lot. So, uh, yeah guys, that, that's pretty much it. That's gonna conclude the first portion of the SRT climbing series, part one, uh, which is about line setting. And so you guys were able to see how to throw your throw line up there and how that requires that, that skill, that technique. Uh, but also don't don't um, be afraid to, to get out there and try it because it doesn't take that long before you start getting good at it. And then it won't be too long thereafter when you start getting, you know, very good at it when you're you're like an expert. And then uh, I did the big shot, the big shot launcher. And with the big shot launcher, that was just, you know, that, was, that thing was too easy. It made everything very easy. Uh, super streamlined and quick uh, there was no skill no technique to know for it and you can basically set how high you want it with with the trigger and even your hand um, sometimes that trigger at the position that it's in uh, it might still throw get the throw line way too high um, and that's kind of like at its minimum setting so uh, you might want to do it with your hand, just pull back the, the slingshot with your hand and then do it that way to get it onto a lower branch, whatever have you, uh, whatever your, 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 your situation is. Anyway, moving on, the hasty method, you guys saw how useful that is. That's useful in uh, pretty much all situations and uh, just that coil throw, uh, just getting that weighted end of the line there with the coils, that's going to help you in various situations all over the tree uh not it doesn't necessarily pertain to uh to ascending only it it pertains to rigging and i'm pretty sure if, you know if you use your imagination you can think of a hundred other ways to use it um but anyway uh that's it guys thank you so much for watching if you haven't already make sure to hit that like and subscribe button I uh, will be putting out the next set of videos pretty soon. Um, I also got some Rope Runner Pro videos in the working right now. So make sure you hit that like, that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all my videos. Also, I uh, just want to wish you guys uh, good health uh, in these trying times. And I hope the best for all of you. Good luck and climb safe, guys. Peace.